Presents the wonderful world of color. Tonight, from the wonderful world of Disney, the final episode of Atta Girl Kelly. we continue our story called At A Girl Kelly. As you'll recall, it's the story of a seeing-eyed dog. Now, in their training days, the blind student and his dog can be taught all the proper commands and responses. But without love, the partnership cannot hope to succeed. Well, the student, of course, can understand this, but what about the dog? What about Kelly of our story? In part one, we saw how Kelly was raised from puppyhood by a boy named Danny Richards. But then there came the day when she was brought back to the seeing eye for training. She had to forget Danny Richards and learn to love a young man named Matt Howell, her new instructor. It wasn't easy, but in the end, patience, understanding, and affection would finally win her over. After four months, her training was complete, and she was ready for assignment to a blind student. But once again, and for the third time, she has to forget one master and learn to love another. And challenge it is when Kelly must face the toughest adjustment yet, learning to love a man who is not only a stranger, but blind. And so begins part three of our story. What you doing there, Robin? Not now, Kelly. You don't have time to play. Now, go on now. Go on. Kelly. All right. Yeah, you're such a good girl. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Howell? The students are here. Okay, sir, be right there. Kelly, what are you doing now? Go on. Go on. Mr. Howell? Yes, sir. You know, this will be a very difficult time for your dog. So the sooner you begin to break her, the better. The breaker? Of you. Oh. Yes, sir. I know our director of training is right. I will have to let Kelly go. It's time to end our partnership. It won't be easy, either for her or me. Kelly, rest. Now stay, Kelly. For Kelly, this is another ending and another beginning. She's finished her seeing eye training and is ready for her third master, the one she'll spend the rest of her life guiding and taking care of, a blind person. This door on our left is the telephone booth. And now we're back in the main lobby. Mr. Duke, will you show Miss Norridge into the recreation room, please? I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You're just in time. Excuse me. Gentlemen, I'd like you to meet your instructor, Mr. Howell. This is Mr. Clayton. Glad to know Mr. Howell. Uh, same here, Mr. Clayton. And Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams. Glad to have you. Good to be here, Mr. Howell. And now, gentlemen, there's a lot to do. So Mr. Howell will take you to your room and you can get settled. Where will you put me this time, Mr. Durant? Well, number four, I think you remember it. Of course, my old room. You'll share it with Mr. Williams. Good. All right, Mr. Howell. <laughs> Now, we're in the lobby now. If you turn this way, down the hall, you'll find yourself at the foot of the stairs leading to your room in the second floor. You want to bet I reach a dead on? Mr. Clayton is back with us for a second dog, and this makes him the old hand. It's good to see him sure of himself. Confidence helps a lot. 
Now, Mr. Williams, straight ahead. Now left and down the hall. Good. Mr. Williams, on the other hand, is a first-timer. Like all newcomers, he's a bit confused about things, but he'll learn. Now keep on the rug, Mr. Williams. Doing just fine, Mr. Williams, just fine. Try right, to stand the carpet. And the stairway is straight ahead. All right. How's that? Couldn't be better. Now, uh, seven steps, a landing, uh, three steps right, another landing, and then seven more steps. Another six. Uh, make a liar out of me for one step. <laughs> Here we are, gentlemen. Now, uh, you're facing... Wait, the... don't tell me. We're facing the window. Uh, the beds are on this side. Chest of drawers over here. Another chest. The closets. How am I doing? Fine. Hey, hey, there's a there's a small chair there. In front of you. <laughs> Don't worry. My shins remember it well. Anything new or that I've forgotten? No, no, you're right at home, Mr. Clayton. Come on, Mr. Williams. I'll give you the grand tour. That's okay. I can find my own way. I can help Mr. Williams. When he needs it. All right. Uh, your suitcases are on the beds. Mr. Williams, that's the one you're sitting on right now. Unless you'd prefer the bed near the window. <laughs> the view sure won't mean anything to me. Well, maybe we can't see it, but personally, I like knowing it's there. Then you keep that bed. Thanks. All right. Uh, you have one hour before the indoctrination meeting, so uh, I'll see you later, all right? Right. The uh, chest of drawers between the beds will be handy for you. I'll use the other one. Sit yourself. First time you've been here, isn't it, Mr. Williams? First time I've been blind. I know they're supposed to be good, but I don't figure a seeing eye dog can help me go off tackle again. Maybe not, but if you asked it, I bet it would try. So, you're a football player. Was. We each have a closet. I'll take the one in the corner. Okay. You sure know the ropes here. Well, I should. This is my second time around. I've already had one dog. And it was okay? What was okay? What with your dog? I mean, the seeing eye business works. You got going again. You could do things. What do you want me to tell you, Mr. Williams? The dog made my life the same as it was before. I could see you again. Oh, no, of course not. It's just that they said everything would be better. It can be. A dog can give you freedom. A chance to get out on your own. A life for yourself that isn't dependent on other people. And the rest is up to you, what you want to do with that life. What I want to do with it? Give it to my worst enemy. That crying towel of yours must be just about soaked through. Now look here, I asked you I a few can't questions. look any more than you can. But I'm listening. Where'd you say the chest is? Between the beds. You found it. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Clayton. They like a certain amount of formality here, but I don't see any reason why we can't drop the mister while we're in our room. That is, if we're going to be roommates. OK, by me. OK. My name's Evan. Charles, Chuck. Right, Chuck. Stop worrying. As soon as you get your dog, 
everything will be better. Nice to see you again. Oh, hello, Mr. Duran. And uh, nice to see you. Thank you. How's your room, Mr. Williams? Oh, it's fine. Thank you very good. Mr. Duran. Ladies and gentlemen, it's customary for me as director of training here at the Seeing Eye, the principal of the school, so to speak, to give you a brief idea of what's ahead of you during the next four weeks. Well, first off, we're glad to have you with us. We believe that we can help you. And I might warn you right now that you'll be very busy during these next weeks. Tomorrow morning, your instructors will take you for a walk in town, start you learning the streets. Tomorrow afternoon, This is the beginning for the students. Mr. Duran's oh, indoctrination. You've been waiting for. A straight from the like shoulder to talk about what they're to expect and beforehand. what's expected of them. We've known your With understanding, but no sentimentality us. or pity. And we've made it a point. Their blindness is a fact, a dog, you however personal. unfortunate. Both inside, but these men and women have faced that fact and are ready to deal with it. Your dog, Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. Will begin in earnest. Nor would the seeing eye be able to help them. And finally, let me make one thing very clear to you. Your dog is not a house pet. Neither is it a machine. It's your partner. And you must work together. You give it care and affection. It will help you to help yourselves. Giving you independence, and dignity. So that's enough talk. Now it's time to go to work. Mr. Williams, can you stand up, please? Yeah, yes. Uh, you go, right, well, well, thank you. Straight ahead. Yes, I think I know the way. All right. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. One of the first things the blind student is taught is the purpose of the guide dog's harness, the channel of communication between dog and master and holding it properly becomes very important. You don't think I'd forget, do you, Mr. Howell? Four word. How's that? Well, it's pretty close to perfect, except you're, you're holding your leash a little too tight. Oh, that's the way Jenny liked it. She was my first dog. Yeah, I know. What kind of a dog am I going to get this time? A shepherd, her name's Kelly. Oh, Jenny was a boxer. Wonderful dog. Four word. Accustomed to spending a lot of time with me, Kelly, I know, probably wonders where I've been all day. I'm sure Robin does, and the others. They miss the affection and the attention. It's not easy to fool dogs as smart as these, especially Kelly. How can I explain it to her? That tomorrow she'll be assigned to a new master. I know I'm not supposed to see her like this, but well, Kelly was my first dog, the first one I trained right from scratch. And I can't very well let her go without saying goodbye. Good night, Kelly. She likes me. Of course. You were worried over nothing. Yeah, sure, Robin. You're my girl. From now on, it's you and me, just the two of us. You may take her to your room now. Okay. Come on, Robin. Uh, to your right, Mr. Wizard. That's it. Oh, would you send in Mr. Clayton? Yes, sir. Now sit over here, please, Mr. Howell. Okay, come. Uh, sit. Oh, come in, Mr. Clayton. The sofa about three steps to your right. Thank you. There you are. Your dog's name is Kelly. Hamburger. And remember, offer it to her when she comes to me.
Call your dog, Mr. Clayton. Kelly, come. Kelly, come. She, Mr. Durant? Black, mostly, shading into gray. You are bigger than Jenny. I guess you won't be able to use her harness. No, Kelly. Sit. Good girl. You can take her to your room now and get acquainted. Right. Kelly, heel. Come, Kelly. Now to your left, Mr. Clayton, and straight ahead. Thank you. Come, Kelly. That's it. What would I do now? How would I feel if I were rejected by my master and turned over to a stranger? Again, Kelly is being asked to forget someone she loves and learn to love another. For the last time, yes, but how can she know? And maybe this is one time too many. Ready to turn in, Chuck? Uh-huh. Where's that chain? Right near your bed, at the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it is. Come on, Robin. Floor for you. What was that? Hmm? What? That noise, a clip. I just turned out the light. That's funny. Having a light on for us. <laughs> oh. Makes things seem a little more normal. I suppose. <laughs> well, good night. Good night, Tuck. You say? Hmm? You called her Jenny. No. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty stupid of me. Sorry, Kelly. Good night. How well do you remember Morris Town, Mr. Clayton? Oh, quite well. Jenny and I used to know it like a book. This is Bank Street, isn't it, where we used to start? All right. But remember, it isn't Jenny anymore. Kelly, Kelly. Here, Mr. Williams, let me give you a feel of the town. Helps to have it in your mind. Now, you feel this little notch here? Yes, sir. Well, that's Bank Street. Now run your finger down to this corner and go right angles. That's Maple Street, where you work today. The students have only four weeks at the seeing eye, so every minute counts. Once they have their dogs, they go right into training on the streets of Morristown. Maple Street is the beginner's course. A quiet, residential street without much traffic. The dogs have all trained along here previously, and they know this part of town well. The first and most important thing is to get the team accustomed to each other to get the feel and the rhythm of moving together. At first, of course, there are bound to be some miscues and some missed signals, and the dogs have to bear it all with considerable patience. Like any beginner, Chuck Williams makes many mistakes, and sometimes Robin seems exasperated. 
If she could talk, I imagine she'd say, I'm trying, can't you do something with him? But Chuck has an athlete's sense of timing, and I can see he's beginning to get the hang of it. No doubt about it, he and Robin will make an ideal pair. Evan Clayton knows exactly what to do and when to do it, and handles Kelly very efficiently. If there's any problem, it's Kelly. She keeps turning to me as if looking for approval and affection, but I can't give it. Kelly is Evan Clayton's dog now. Watching and working with the two men, I realize I must not interrupt too often. I must not distract the dogs whose affection right now leans more toward me than toward their new masters. It's important that they work out their own sense of communication. And as always, the whole basis must be trust and love. I begin to see it working in Chuck's case. More and more, Robin has developed the responsible attitude so natural to a seeing eye dog. She's alert to every obstacle, and in Morristown, we purposely go where obstacles will pop up. In moments of real danger, of course, I have to step in. Evan and Kelly aren't hitting it off. Their performance seems mechanical. There's something missing. Hey, out a girl, Robin. Forward. Forward. Mr. Clayton? Yes? Nothing wrong? You didn't praise your dog. Oh, of course. Out a girl, Kelly. Forward. Queen of Spades. Nine of Trump. What? <laughs> Don't bother to count them, Mr. Williams. I concede you win again. You had to teach him how to read Braille cards, Mr. Ferraro. You wanted a three-handed game, Mr. Oppenheim. It's just luck. Your turns will come. Just once before I go back home. That's all I ask. Gentlemen, do we talk or do we play pinochle? Deal. That was very nice, Mr. Clayton. It certainly was. Uh, Thank you. Do you play professionally? No, I'm an attorney. Oh, really? In the courtroom and all? Well, I'm not exactly a Perry Mason, but yes, I'm a trial lawyer. Oh, and you're allowed to bring your dog into court? Mm hmm Oh, Jenny was always with me. <laughs> a bailiff once told me he could always tell which way the verdict would go by the way she behaved when the jury came in. Oh, what do you mean? Well, he'd watch her. And if she sat up and wagged her tail, I'd win my case. But if she just lay there and didn't move, I'd lose. <laughs> he swears she was never wrong. Oh, oh now, really? No, it's true. Oh, what a remarkable dog. Oh, the greatest, believe me. There'll never be another one like her. Oh, come on, Kelly. Do you always have to be right under my feet? Clayton mentioned his former dog very often. All the time. Well, it's natural, I suppose. A man remembers his first dog with a special affection. Well, is there something wrong? Well, I've just been reading your progress report, and something puzzles me. What's that, sir? Well, I can't understand why Mr. Clayton isn't further along in his training. He's intelligent, experienced. He certainly knows what's expected of him here. Yet you grade him at the same level as Mr. Williams, a beginner. I know. That's the way I see it. I'm not challenging your opinion, Mr. Howell. I merely wonder why. Is he having any trouble with his dog? Don't they work well together? Yes, they, they work well together. Uh, you don't sound very positive. I'm just not sure, sir. It, it's like the feeling that, uh, that there's something missing somewhere, and I can't spot it. I don't even know where to look. Any major flaws? Do you have to make many corrections? Uh, hardly any. About all I have to do is keep reminding Mr. Clayton to praise his dog. A suggestion, Mr. Howell. Use that as a signpost and look a little harder. Good night. 
Good night. Now the students begin to expose themselves to the many different but everyday situations they'll have to face later on when they're on their own. Chuck Williams keeps improving with every workout. He trusts Robin and she loves him. Uh, they're pretty close to the perfect seeing eye partnership. But Evan Clayton and Kelly, if anything, they're losing ground. No, Kelly, stop drifting. Straight. <laughs> no, Kelly, phooey, phooey. What happened? Oh, I bumped into some kid's bike. The dog didn't leave me around her. She tried, Mr. Clay. Well, she didn't do a very good job. There's something wrong, Mr. Howell. I'm just not getting her directions. Why, with Jenny, I always knew right away. Now, dogs are different, Mr. Clayton. They each have their own little way of working, and you, you have to get used to them. Learn them. Well, I know that. Don't you think I'm trying? So was Kelly. I think she could use some encouragement. So could I, Mr. Howell. Kelly, forward. Come ahead, Mr. Williams. Robin, forward. Any problem, Mr. Howell? Yeah, the one I couldn't find before. Your signpost was right on target. Well, at least we know which way to go. Now don't lose your students, Mr. Howell. Yes, sir. Mr. Clayton, don't we give you enough work all day? I think we could stand some overtime, Mr. Durant. Perhaps, but not for that. For something else? Come on, Mr. Durant. I know we're not working well. What's wrong? Let me tell you about this dog, Mr. Clayton. She's like all our dogs here at Seeing Eye. She was raised by a young boy and, of course, grew to love him. Then she had to forget him and learn to love Mr. Howell. Now she has to forget Mr. Howell and learn to love you. And she hasn't been able to do it. She wants to, I'm sure. You see, the shepherd is a breed that instinctively needs someone to love and take care of. That's why we use it. But now Kelly doesn't have Mr. Howell any longer. She's lost, has no one to work for. What do you mean, no one? I'm her master now? But does she know that? Here, love is giving. The student and the dog give to each other. Perhaps Kelly doesn't get what she needs. Of course she does. I take care of her, good care. Taking care is doing, Mr. Clayton. Love is feeling. Look, what are you trying to tell me? That this is all my fault? You've had one dog, the uh, boxer. Yes, and Jenny and I worked perfectly together. Because you loved her and showed it. Are you doing the same with Kelly? Why, of course I am. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Durand, I'm not that stupid. I know what she means to me. She's my eyes. Don't you think I want to see? Of course you do. So why don't you? See you tomorrow, Mr. Durand. Kelly, forward. Mr. Durand says he wants me to watch my students closely, Mr. Clayton in particular. And I noticed that more and more lately, he comes along as an observer, too. I know he's concerned because this is the final week of training. And soon we'll be sending the students home to cope with their problems on their own. Chuck Williams and Robin are working like a seasoned team. They can handle traffic with complete safety. They take stairways like veterans. And this is one of the toughest situations we set up for them. I notice Mr. Duran seems pleased with their progress, too. 
But Mr. Clayton still has problems. In some ways, he's almost as unsure as a beginner. I wish I had some magic answer for Mr. Duran, because I know it's bothering him, too. Funny thing, I don't know what this town looks like, but I bet I know it better than most people who live here. And I'm gonna miss it. Hey, Evan, you there? Yes. Well, why don't you say something? Anything special you want to hear? Oh, it's gonna be one of those days again, huh? Skip it. Good girl, Robin. Good girl. Mr. Howell, this is Maple Street, right? On the nose. Told you I know this town. Kelly, forward. Robin, forward. Good girl. Kelly, left. Good girl. Forward. Anything wrong, Mr. Williams? My shoelace is untied. You go on ahead. No, that's all right. Evan isn't doing too well, is he? No, he's OK. He's just got a few problems. Only one, as far as I'm concerned. Jenny. Robin, forward. I hadn't realized the situation was so obvious. But if Mr. Williams can sense it, then something has to be done. And soon. Almost hit a car. Come on, girl. Come on. Sounded like a Come on, Robin. Or... Come on. I guess it scared Robin. Yeah, it sure did. It's okay, girl. It's all over now. No, Mr. Williams, correct her. For what? She turned you into the stairway. The truck scared her. No, she has to be corrected. No, not by me. Forward, Robin. Good girl, Robin. How about a little dinner? Yeah. May I come in, Mr. Williams? Oh, sure, Mr. Durant. Come on in. Sorry to disturb you, but... I have to talk to you. Sure. No, no, thanks. You don't sound like this is just a social call. No. Mr. Howell told me what happened this afternoon on Bank Street. Oh, well, I'm sorry if I broke the rules, but I just couldn't see bawling out Robin for a thing like that. It just wasn't her fault. No, but it was. Or to be more accurate, a fault in her makeup, her nature. <laughs> what are you talking about? Robin panicked. She lost control of herself. You're leading up to something. I'm afraid the dog will have to be replaced, Mr. Williams. Hey, now. You get another one. And stay on for the next class. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, I don't have any choice. You don't have... <laughs> now, what about me? I don't want another dog. I've got a dog. Robin. She's my... She's not suitable for seeing I work. Oh, just because of some crazy noise? Because of her reaction to that noise. And you're just finding out about that now? Robin was thoroughly tested before you got her, Mr. Williams, and there was nothing wrong. It's probably a combination, everything happening at once. And it won't happen again, not in a million years. Not that, but something else, perhaps. The point is, she panicked, and she'll do it again. Next time, you could be crossing a street, she'd pull you in front of a car. You could be alone, she'd run away from you, anything. And your life might be in danger. That's my problem. No, Mr. Williams, that's my problem. I understand how you feel. We gave you the dog, encouraged you to love her. Now we're taking her away from you. Seems very cruel, but there's nothing else we can do. Yes, there is. Forget it. I'm finished training. I'm ready to leave here. Just let us go and forget it. We can't. You came to us for help. 
You wanted eyes, and it's our job to give them to you. You did. Well, they're not perfect. And we can't be satisfied with less. But I am. Sorry, Mr. Williams. A seeing eye dog is a working dog. If you want a pet, you can get one at any store. Doc? Hello, Mr. Clayton. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting something? No, we've finished, I think. We'll talk about this again later, Mr. Williams. See you at dinner. Mr. Durand. Yes? What'll happen to her? Now, don't worry. We'll see that she gets a good home. Chuck, what's going on? They're taking her away from me. What? Robin, they're taking her away. But why? On account of what happened this afternoon. She panicked, Duran says, and she'll do it again. I don't care. Sorry, Chuck, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, they're not going to do it. She's mine. I'm keeping her. Oh, they know what's best, Chuck. Not for me, they don't. Oh, you've got to go along with them. Sure, Robin's the only dog in the world for you right now, but you'll get over it. You'll forget her. Yeah, sure, like you're forgetting Jenny, I suppose. You're a great one to talk. this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm sorry for the way I treated you. You're not Jenny, and you never will be. Yes, I loved her, but that has nothing to do with you. You're Kelly, and I can love you, too. I do love you. Mr. Duran says you need someone. Well, so do I. We need each other. Start over. It's not too late. And I promise you, it'll all be different. Mr. Clayton. Oh, yes, Mr. Duran. I'd like to talk to you. Of course. About Kelly and me, right? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact. Your work isn't very pleasant today. Well, these things happen. We try our best, but we make mistakes. All we can hope to do then is correct them in time. Mr. Durand, whatever went wrong between Kelly and me was my fault. Yes, for the most part. But it happened. You and the dog were mismatched. But perhaps another one more like your first, Jenny. I don't want another Jenny. There can never be another one like her. Mr. Durand, I'm not going to argue or beg. I just want one favor, time. I know where I went wrong now. Give me the time to work things out with Kelly. I'm sorry, but there's no time left. Well, the class ends on Saturday. I have till then. Mr. Clayton, simply wanting to love the dog isn't enough. You can't just put on a show. She'll know. Give me the chance to prove it to her. Up to you. But don't try to fool yourself, either. Without love, there can be no trust and no team. Just watch us. And you be the judge. Rest assured, Mr. Clayton. I will. Kelly, forward. Good girl. Atta girl, Kelly. Almost overnight, it seems, Kelly and Mr. Clayton have become a new team. The change in their performance is remarkable. Mr. Clayton seems to have recaptured the old rhythm and the old confidence. This affects Kelly, too. Now she feels important and needed. She's working with someone who knows what he's doing, someone who seems to appreciate what she's doing. We're out on the streets at every opportunity in all kinds of weather, climbing stairways practically two at a time.
I've never seen such determination. And I have to admit, I'm the one having a hard time keeping up. prove anything more to me. Well, okay. Up, up, Kelly. Mr. Clayton, there's no sense of both of us getting soaked. I'll get the car, you wait in one of these stores. Now wait. Drop your harness and take my arm. Come on. So stay here. Whatever you say. All right, I'll be back as fast as I can. Inside somewhere. Well, I hope so. It's dangerous to be out in this.
Clayton. Don't move. All right, Mr. Clayton. Yes. All right. You're safe now. That a girl, Kelly. That's my girl. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, for giving me that extra chance. Good luck. You keep in touch now. I will. Evan? Chuck? So long. I work hard with that new dog. Well, I'm trying. But after Robin, it's a little rough. You'll do it. If the dogs can, so can we. It's always easier. Excuse me, Mr. Clayton. There's a lot of traffic on the way to the airport. Right. Goodbye. Well, that's the story of my first dog, Kelly. A story that will always have a sort of special flavor for me. She and Mr. Clayton are a well-matched team, the kind we all try for at the seeing eye. Come. Come, Kelly. Come. Good. Good. Yeah. yeah. Makes me feel good that she's made it. In a way, I guess, I'm like Mr. Clayton with Jenny. I don't suppose I'll ever really forget her. We'll hear from them from time to time. We always do. And with Kelly, I know it'll always be good news. a girl, Kelly. a girl, Kelly. And so Kelly learned to love her blind master. Remarkable animals, the C&I dogs, all of them. And we are glad to have been able to pay them this tribute.